Welcome to episode 2. In this episode, I'll be telling you about the basic fabrication principles of the subtractive, formative, and additive process. So yeah. So to begin with episode 2, I would like to tell you of a, of a misconception that I think is relevant to this topic. So I think what people think is that 3D printing will tra threaten existing manufacturing jobs, as in it will take over them. But I think in my opinion, I think 3D printing will actually be like interwoven within existing manufacturing methods such as such as like hybrid machines that incorporate subtractive and additive manufacturing process together or 3d printing molds will help the formative processes so i so i think that existing knowledge on current manufacturing will still be very much needed however people just have to take note that 3d printing can enhance their existing manufacturing method and provide a more higher quality product yeah so with the misconception gotten away let me proceed with the aims and learning outcomes of this episode basically the aims of this episode is to explore the distinction between subtractive formative and additive manufacturing processes the learning outcomes i hope you'll be able to describe the basic steps of each process i hope you'll be able to write two advantages and disadvantages for each process and hopefully you can discuss about it discuss about the distinctions of each process in terms of material speed geometric complexity accuracy and the programming of the process so let's begin firstly it's subtractive process so subtractive manufacturing is when a block of raw material as you can see from the picture a billet is selectively cut down by a machine tool in like machining to, to achieve a final desired shape, which is the part that you want. So examples of a subtractive process, you can see is like machining, laser cutting, and grinding. So the image below shows the process of the subtractive. From the billet, the, which is the raw material, it is then subtractively machined down into the final desired shape, which is the part that you want. And then all the other material that got machined away becomes scrap material so yeah so i hope you know about the steps involved in the subtractive process now let's move on to the advantages and disadvantages in terms of material i think there are a large variety of materials available mainly because there are sub the subtractive process is a very simple process in which you could just have a milling machine and it's it basically just cuts away material so basically if you have a tool that is harder and sharper than the material that you want to cut away then you are able to use the subtractive process next is the accuracy so the subtractive process offers very tight tolerances because the toolings are very sharp so next speed i think subtractive process is a relatively quick process and also that the subtractive process could also be automated so I think that increases the speed next for the disadvantages of the subtractive process in terms of geometric complexity I think a limited geome geometry is capable because the geometry that you can machine the geometry that you can fabricate out is very much depending is very much dependent on the tooling that you have next for programming i personally feel it's a bit difficult to program the subtractive process especially in the automated subtractive process also known as cnc because there are many changes of tooling so you need one tool to do like the rough cutting another tool to do the final cutting and lastly a probably a polishing tool to make the surface better so these are few other advantages and disadvantages of the subtractive process next next moving on to the formative process so the formative process is when raw material is forced to take the shape of the forming tool so examples are like forging injection molding or bending so from the picture you could see the machine forging process basically your work piece your workpiece, which is like the billet that we mentioned previously, is placed between the 
the RAM and the anvil and these two components will compress with each other so you compress your billet into the final shape that you want so after compressing for a certain time the RAM and the anvil will open up and then you have your finished piece and then usually there's a bit of flash that is uh, like the material that is like squeezed in between your both tooling so that could be post process afterwards so yeah next now let's move on to the advantages and disadvantages of the formative process in terms of materials i think there are a large variety of materials available mainly the metallic materials and the polymer materials also worth to note that the formative process such as metallic casting has been around for a very long time next for programming i think it is relatively simpler as compared to the machining because there's lesser change of tooling you basically have to just compress the material in the middle and then eject the the final object out and then you can put a new material in and to repeat the process as for speed i believe that the formative process is, can be a re relatively quick high volume manufacturing process result in a very low cost of part mainly in the injection molding kind of formative process next advantage of the formative process is geometric complexity i think more intricate shapes can be formed by the casting process as compared to the machining process so now for the disadvantages i think the only disadvantages is probably in the accuracy the accuracy is very much dependent on the more tooling that you have that you're going to compress the raw material so example if your tooling is like not accurate or if your tooling has a very really poor surface finish all these uh, is going to be transmitted onto your final work piece so the creation of this mold tooling is expensive and it also takes up a lot of time so i think that's the main disadvantage of the formative process so next so now we move on to the additive process. Basically, it is when successive layers of materials are manipulated to lay on, on top of each other to form the final shape. So some people call this as a layer by layer process. So examples of an additive process is 3D printing. Or another one that I can think of right now is like in pottery making, where the where the artist would probably lay the clay onto a spinning wheel and gradually add clay on top of each other until it will form the pottery. So on the image on this slide, you could see the additive process taking place. The orange spheres are laid in a circular pattern and then they are laid on top of each other and eventually the spheres will form with each other to form the final cylinder you can see in image 4. So next. So now for the advantages and disadvantages of the additive process. So one of the main things that the additive process has got going for itself is that I feel that it's very capable of building complex geometries. So this means that it can have the ability to create geometries that you just cannot create by the subtractive or the formative process. So this makes designers have the chance to finally try a complex design which in the past they were limited by the manufacturing process. Another main advantage of the additive process is that programming is relatively simple. So even if you program it wrong somehow, the most you would have is probably a very uh, failed component but relatively very little damage would occur as compared to the other processes um, and also that the additive process has only usually only a single or, or double tooling so a single tool such as an extruder head which which deposits the material so you only need to control one tool so programming is like relatively simpler as compared to the previous two processes disadvantages of the additive process would be probably the speed so the speed of the additive process is very slow um, as compared to the other process. Materials, currently the 
there's really very limited materials available for the additive process. Accuracy, I think the accuracy of additive process is very varied. So while some 3D printers could print very accurate parts, others would have a very rough accuracy. So it really depends on each process and the material used for each process. So I think that's a disadvantage of the additive process that I will definitely be touching on on the further episodes. Yeah. So this is the end of the episode and now I would like to summarize the episode. So basically I hope you know the basic steps of the subtractive, formative and additive manufacturing process. I hope you know the advantages and disadvantage of each process. Hopefully you'll be able to write two of each in terms of the material, the speed, the geometric complexity, accuracy and programming related to each process. So yeah, next. So now for the references, once again I would like to thank all the websites and organizations for the images that are used in the this episode and in all the episodes. First, the reference I'll have is the module that I took in my university, M6423 prototyping and rapid prototyping module. So that gave me an idea of what 3D printing was, is. Another reference that I want to I want to acknowledge is a book by Ian Gibson, David Rosen, Brent Stucker, additive manufacturing technologies in which the idea of this distinction between the processes I got from the book basically is in chapter one. So I thank you once again for listening to this episode and stay tuned for episode three then.